Hello artists, today I'm going to introduce you to the work of Alex Beard. He's a painter, author, and illustrator. He lives in New Orleans and he loves to paint animals. Nature is his favorite subject and uh, particularly African animals. He spent a lot of time in Africa and has started an organization called the Watering Hole Foundation that raises money to help save endangered animals. He's also written and illustrated several books, one of which he was kind enough to give me permission to read to you now. Hi guys, it's Miss Mac, and today I wanted to share a book with you that is written and illustrated by one of my favorite artists. His name is Alex Beard, and he lives in New Orleans. I'm really hoping that this book gives you some great inspiration for artworks that you might want to create. Okay, are you ready? The book is called Monkey See, Monkey Draw. At the foot of Mabuno Hills in Africa, a troop of monkeys lived in an old baobab tree. They chattered and swung from the branches and liked to play games. The monkeys played ring around the rhino. They played pin the tail on the warthog. Their favorite game was monkey in the middle, which they played with the last baobab nut from their ancient tree. In the hills where the monkeys played, there was a cave. It was very dark and the monkeys never went inside. Let's go inside. No way. It could be dangerous. It could be full of horrible beasts or worse. One day, Elephant came to visit. Can I play? Elephant in the middle, the monkeys cheered. The monkeys tried to keep the baobab nut away from Elephant, but Elephant was too big. He easily plucked the prize from the air. Excited, Elephant launched the baobab nut. It bound away and rolled into the cave. <gasps> the baobab nut is lost. The game is ruined. What will we do? It's so dark in there. Silly monkeys, Elephant said. Don't be afraid of the dark. Come with me and I'll show you there's nothing to fear. With a few curious and brave monkeys clinging to his back, Elephant walked into the cave. Inside, the cave was cool and musty. It was hard for Elephant and the monkeys to see. After a few moments, their eyes adjusted to the dark. What they saw amazed them. The walls of the cave were decorated with paintings of animals. Each picture was made from a handprint or a footprint. Elephant looked down at his own feet. He stepped in a muddy corner and pressed one foot against a clean spot on the wall. Using his trunk, Elephant smudged the print until it looked like a monkey. The monkeys were delighted. They forgot their fear of the dark and the lost nut. Jumping up and down, they shrieked, a new game! The monkeys ran outside to show their friends. They called this new game, Monkey See, Monkey Draw. Before long, a few monkeys bickered over whose painting was best. Soon, all the monkeys were arguing. As the monkeys squabbled, it began to rain. Their paintings dripped and ran and turned back into mud. The monkeys sat in the rain. All our work is gone, they said. Whose painting was best? Who won the game? Elephant walked out of the cave with the lost baobab nut. No one is the winner, he said. It's not a contest. His feet covered in fresh mud, Elephant stomped down on a clean slate and started to draw. The monkeys got up to join in. Soon they were all laughing and painting in the sun. The monkeys still live in the baobab tree, but they're no longer afraid of the dark painted cave. They also still play games to win, but after a good rain when there's plenty of mud on the ground, they paint and draw just for fun. So when you're looking at Alex Beard's work, it's impossible not to notice how many curvy and swirling lines he uses. It's a good way to help sort of identify his work because it appears in everything. He uses them because those are the lines and the shapes that you find in nature. Now today for our project, we're gonna use some swirly lines too, but you're gonna need a paper and pencil, eraser, and either colored pencils, crayons, markers, or if you have them, some watercolor paints. You're gonna start by simply doing a scribble doodle on a paper. You can do it by looking at the page or not looking at the page. Don't worry about what it's gonna be. And then once you're done, start looking at it. I could turn this into a turtle 
or I could turn it into a snail, but maybe turn the paper around and look at it from different angles. Oh, I can totally see what I can turn this into now. So I'm gonna start adding some little details. Later, if you need to, you can erase a line or two, but right now I'm just gonna start by adding in some things. I bet by looking at this, you can totally tell what I'm turning it into. So I'm gonna give my little critter some sleepy little eyes. And then, um, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna draw the muzzle. Yes, you can tell by now that I'm gonna draw a dog, right? So I'm using a permanent marker because I'm actually gonna use watercolor paints when I add color to this. If I try to do that with a marker that's not permanent, the colors are gonna, the, the black's gonna run into the colors. So I'm gonna use a permanent marker. Now you don't have to paint it. You can use um, whatever other materials you have for uh, adding color to your work. So I'm gonna erase a couple lines. Uh, pencil lines and then get to work with my watercolors. I'm going to tell you now the watercolor I have at home I didn't like so much, but um, It'll work. So remember when you're using watercolors that uh, The more water you use the lighter the color will be and the more paint you use the darker the color will be So you're just gonna go and fill in your work and uh, I bet it's gonna be beautiful when you're done. I liked using the watercolors to add the color to it, but these can be equally beautiful with any other material that you can use to, to color in. Uh, I didn't get a chance to paint my background, but if I was going to do this again, I would completely paint my background and maybe add, you know, a little bit of the dog's body in there as well. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other examples of ones that I have made using different materials. Uh, I did this elephant. This one I used um, watercolor pencils with. And then this rabbit, I used a uh, colored pencil, just regular colored pencil. You could do the same thing with crayon as well, if that's what you have at home. And here's another watercolor one I did. This one I did the background, and you can see that every time I had, a, even though I didn't trace the pencil lines, all of them, I changed color when I got to the pencil lines. I hope you enjoy this project, and I would love to see what you've created. <laughs>